Hello all, the practitioner here, bachelor of science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, amateur magician, and parapsych researcher. Um, today, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to do a book review on a uh, book I picked up, ironically, in the New Age section. Um, this is going to talk, uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the book, um, uh, my own personal thoughts on it. And then I'm also going to talk about something else which really bugs the crap out of me, and this is in relation to um, bookstore uh, construction, at least uh, at least on issues pertaining to paranormal phenomena and uh, theism versus atheism. Um, when it comes to other science and stuff like that, I think they probably do a pretty good job. Anyway, uh, so this is book is called the Parapsych the Parapsych um, Revolution. Um, basically, what it does is uh, um, to uh, finish off. Um, special notice is taken of the episodes of fraud and their troubling persistence in the field. The authors uh, examine the work of reputable scholars such as uh, Ian Stevenson, William James, and J.B. Rhine, who did um, so much to legitimize this field of parapsychology. Finally, the parapsychology revolution addresses and clarifies the all-important question, is there evidence of a, for a world beyond? Um, basically, this book, um, I'm going to take a look. Uh, to go through the um, chapter by chapter would actually be kind of unnecessary, but I think I can pretty well explain. Um, what they do here is they actually talk about, um, they publish about 14 different articles, um, each from uh, various books, uh, the Journal of Parapsychology. Um, they, um, a couple of things which were uh, interesting in here was they published, um, they published Marcello Truzzi's classic article in 1998 from uh, on some unfair practices towards claims of the paranormal, uh, talking about uh, some of the um, popular arguments. Ray Hyman is quoted in here a couple of times. Um, Jessica Utz's um, article from 1991 on meta-analysis and parapsychology is published in here. And to skeptics and believers alike, that would definitely that particular article would be a really good read um, because they talk about uh, she talks about um, the concepts of replication and effect size and a whole bunch of other stuff pertaining to actual statistics, um, which um, should be a very good interesting base point for believers and skeptics alike to take a look at this and then go do research on their own on actual statistics issues um, just to see if what she's talking about in this context is right. Um, they've got quite a few pro articles in here. Um, I read some of the... Oh, uh, there were a couple in here which I thought were uh, very interesting. Um, they Again, like I said, there's a lot of pro articles in here, but there's a couple uh, in here which I thought were very good. Uh, one of called one was called the uh, the elusive nature in psi. Again, um, uh, what is beyond the edge of the known world? Again, this was just um, her talking about. Um, uh, this was again uh, Gene E. Burns uh, talking about the uh, the actual elusiveness of psi research, um, the actual state of affairs right now, including the fact the um, the Gansfield uh, more recent meta analyses from the last couple of years have actually gone in and out of uh, in meta analyses recently have actually gone in and out of statistical significance, and this is what's improved control. So this actually leaves the Gansfield in a highly controversial area, uh, not because of the fact of evidence for psi or lack thereof, but because of the fact, um, uh, no, I mean, not in terms of controls or what have you. Um, again, uh, to any skeptics who are saying that, it's, uh, that the uh, significant results are purely based on, uh, uh, at least nowadays, are purely based on experimental flaws that were held up before, not entirely true now. They have done some dramatic improvements. However, they have actually had uh, three different meta-analyses since um, the uh, the major issues were found. They've all been done by computer. There were um, there were groups that were um, they've done um, uh, they did a, ch a checking of 11 studies meta analysis. Then they did a check of another 30 that were replicated elsewhere, which were at chance levels. Then they checked another 12, which were uh, statistically significant as well. And that's that whole fluctuation in and out of chance. And again, these were all done by different people. So the um, and then, of course, Dean Radin on another video I've already critiqued uh, talks about eight, uh, skeptics who ran a series of eight trials and got statistically significant eight, st eight studies, and then they got that 9-1 below chance. I mean, the point is that the Gans field is so controversial um, that, you know, for all we know, it could be just high statistical blips, and that's the interesting thing. It may not necessarily be experimental flaws anymore. So, again, do try to uh, not straw man current research. Uh, again, one more reason I would strongly suggest reading this one is because they also bring up the latest. Uh, di they also bring up the latest details, both in uh, you know on from both sides of the issue on what has actually been going on with parapsych research in terms of the Gans field, the um, uh, the pair research laboratories. They also, uh, yeah, ironically in here they talk about um, failure to replicate even uh, by pair at one point. So uh, again, um, I found this in the New Age section. Um, it seems to be generally pro, but it, but ironically, even though the bulk of the authors are pro, 
uh, even most of the pro authors actually do uh, mention where the flaws in the research currently are and um, you know and where the problems are and where we actually need to work in terms of uh, further research on this issue um, basically it pretty well uh, to the bit uh, basically it states that uh, we may have some data but um, further uh, issues need to be addressed there is some commentary in here by the uh, by the compilers and um, Again, yeah, like I said, most of it's just out of uh, Statistical Science, the Journal of Parapsychology, and I think there's one article from here in the Zetetic from somewhere, uh, now a Skeptical Inquirer. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, in my opinion, I'm going to give it th uh, three and a half, maybe four stars, um, as being a good read. Uh, it is a pro piece, but um, nonetheless, I still think it's a good read. Um, it it does cover a large chunk of the, um, you know, it does it does try to cover in its totality a large chunk of the actual research that's been going on, um, both from pro and skeptic sides, or at least it tries to do its credit to mention it, and of course it tries to debunk some of the skeptical arguments or some of the pro arguments or what have you. Um, so yeah, uh, I do think it's a, uh, I do think it's a good interesting piece. I think that I would recommend this in conjunction uh, with Michael Shermer's Why People Believe Weird Things. Um, which is also a very uh, good book. Um, again, I've had some problems with uh, uh, Michael Shermer's arguments on ESP and stuff like that in a couple of areas. But um, other than that, uh, again, that's just my own personal view on his arguments. Uh, on a couple of his arguments, they're not quite fully up to speed. But other than that, um, I would have to say, you know, I did sense a slight with straw man, but again, I've already commented on that in previous videos, or I think that I emailed him on that one. Anyway, um, I digress. So, like I said, this is a good book. Now. Uh, briefly, while I have the three minutes and twelve seconds left, I'm going to talk about the other issue, which is bugging me. Um, in Bolin Books, which is a Canadian book chain uh, where I picked this up, I found this book in the New Age section. This is a book on scientific research, uh, the, uh, pro, pro or not. I mean, even the, even if it was pro or what have you. This is a book on scientific research and should be in the science section. Now, the only reason I say this, uh, as opposed to just simply putting all the skeptical research and the, uh, all the skeptic books on this in the science section and all the pro books in the New Age, is one small thing. At the local bookstore where I came across this, um, there was a book that was pro-ESP in the science section by Michael Talbot called The Holographic Universe. Yes, this was in the science section of the bookstore, in conjunction with Michael Shermer's skeptic book, Why People Believe Weird Things. Now the thing is, I find it odd that a bookstore would put one pro book, would put a token pro book, a one that wasn't even particularly good, mind you, um, in the science section, and then every other pro book on uh, uh, every other book that was pro ESP research would automatically get filed to New Edge. And the thing is that, um, and I've also had problems with this about the fact that um, uh, certain uh, interpretational books, uh, such as um, Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion, got put in the history section of a bookstore when it technically should be over in the science section. Or, um, or Ann Coulter's Godless actually got put right across from Richard Dawkins' piece. Uh, it's her attack on uh, secular humanism and science and everything that we hold dear. They put that in the history section when that should be over in the philosophy section. You know, I mean, technically speaking, the thing is that half these books get misshelved, and a lot of, and this could create, given the uh, categorization in a bookstore, even could create a uh, a connotation about a lot of these issues in people's minds. Like, for example, if we put parapsychological research, you know, flawed or not, if we put all of that, all the pro stuff in the New Age section and all the skeptic stuff in the uh, in the science section, that would create the idea that parapsychology as a discipline is just a lot of hogwash. Uh, when that might not necessarily be the case, it could be just honest researchers who are attempting to take a look at stuff, but they haven't necessarily dealt fully with the flaws. That's why it would be a good idea to put both pro and con stuff in there and have a lot more con stuff as well, um, you know, or stuff which just tries to be a bit more balanced in the science section, uh, you know, preferably all lumped together in one section. So this way people, both pros and skeptics, can, and I'm not trying to argue it based on the same level as the creationists of trying to put one side or the other out and equally, uh, and equally be able to... Um, you know, determine uh, for themselves which is right. No, my reasoning for suggesting putting books like this in the science section, uh, rather than just one token book, but put them all in there if you're going to do that, and put all the skeptic books there as well, is because of the fact that it would be a good idea for skeptics to be able to take a look at what precisely the parapsychologists are saying right now, so this way they can formulate their arguments better against pseudoscience. Or it, it would also be a better idea so this way people who are new to the issue can take a look at the at the pro stuff or what have you and then take a look at the skeptics work and then go, oh, so that's why the pro stuff is wrong or stuff like that. You know, then they'd actually have proper context for it. Anyway, that's just my thought on it. Um, 
Toodles.